Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Chat Sunday. I'm your host, Fabiola, and thank you so much for tuning in. In the studio today, I'm joined by some very special guests, and on this episode, we'll be discussing university life. So would you guys please introduce yourselves? Hi, guys. My name is Shawa, and I study psychology, but I'm currently on my placement year. My name is Kwame. I graduated from university not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Um, Within the last decade, I'm not going to say which year, <laughs> but um, I went to the number one university in the country, which is University of Hertfordshire. The number one? <laughs> number one. Okay. I'm not going to say what it's number one for, but it's definitely number one <laughs> in something. <laughs> Thanks, Kwame. Hi, I'm Rochelle, um, and I'm currently also doing my placement year, um, my master's physician associate studies. Yeah. Wow, thank you guys. And how are you all feeling today? Good. Yeah, good. 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 Just had a wonderful church service mm-hmm. uh, the restrictions in lockdown have been eased slightly so looking to utilize that so yeah. we're in a good space at the moment yeah, yeah. that's great that's wonderful yeah. so what i heard was that you rochelle and shaywa you guys are both in university right now yeah mm-hmm. wow yeah. okay so how has that been being a university student and also you know living through a pandemic yeah mm. i think um, personally for me, I sort of I had a unique situation where, I mean, it might not be unique because I know other people have gone through a similar thing, um, but I was, or, or I am, was classified as um, extremely clinically vulnerable. Mm-hmm. So I had a lot of ups and downs, especially with my clinical rotations um, and with COVID happening. Um, in first, in my first year, um, it was sort of um, a blessing, not COVID itself, but the um, repercussions of it. I had a significant amount of time off. So I had a lot of time to do studying, a lot of time to just catch up on life in general. Mm-hmm. So it was um, a blessing for me to have that time. Um, but in my second year, in my final year, which is currently now, um, I had a lot of my clinical rotations jumbled up and down. A lot of hospital providers that couldn't cater to me because um, of my illness and COVID restrictions. So um, I was tossed and thrown all over the place and it was very stressful at times, but God has been good. um, And I mean, I now have all my rotations sorted. I've been placed in fantastic hospitals um, and with fantastic supervisors. So it all worked out in the end, but it's definitely had its ups and downs for sure. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, Michelle. I'm fortunate because I'm on my placement year, it means that, you know, I'm back at home. So, you know, I'm not in uni, I'm not paying rent, I'm not <laughs> in need, you know, that's yeah. a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm more I'm just kinda of doing my own thing, but I'm working full time. So mm. they what they require of me, which is just to go in when schools are open and stuff like that, is different to when you're a uni student. When you're a uni student, you're already going into uni, that's one side of it. But then you have to do so much work outside of uni mm. that just hearing from like my friends and stuff like that, uh, it's been hard for them. It's been very hard. They yeah. haven't been able to go into the library, utilize their space, you yeah. know. Yeah. And it's obviously you're doing your lectures from bed, so it's not the same <laughs> at all. <laughs> Imagine not how good. productive that is. Exactly. Yeah. As if people are even turning up to the oh, lectures. Yeah, that, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. They're not just yeah. putting on the screen, <laughs> put a blank screen on, put yourself <laughs> on mute, the other way, mute, exactly. <laughs> and then sleep. <laughs> I can't yeah. lie, that would probably be me for a couple of years. <laughs> 100%, 100%. Even in my year before, yeah, we had the last term. It was online, of course, because when COVID started. And I just, I was just missing it. Like, it wasn't even on purpose. You think it's at 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. And you, then you wake up at whatever time it is. You know, yeah, the sun exactly. is shining. You're just thinking that life is going <laughs> on. Yeah. You forget you're actually in uni yeah. and you need to attend these lectures. So, yeah, it's wow. been tough. <laughs> How do you think you would have handled, you know, being a university student? I don't think I would have handled it too well Mm. um, because, funnily enough, I used to go to all my lectures, Mm -hmm. um, but I think having that, you know, that opportunity to do it from home, I probably think that I wouldn't have joined in on my lectures. Um, I'm someone who very much works well in, like, an organised environment, Mm. so Mm -hmm. the library for me was, like, a necessity for me to be learning around others as well, having resources and that kind of thing. So being in a situation where there's no library and I have to use my room, yeah, yeah. probably wouldn't have been good for me. No, and I agree. Just from college experience, I remember when I used to try and work from home, 
I'd start on the desk <laughs> for 20 minutes, then I'd move to my bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you move to your bed. That slow means. progression. Oh, yeah. Slow progression yeah, to the yeah, pillow. Yeah. Before you know it, You're it's out. over. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. I don't think I would have been very productive during yeah. this time. No, I agree. I think that would be a huge challenge. You know, having a space that's like this is the library. This is where you study, yeah. and, and mm. this is your bed. This is where you sleep and relax. Having those two spaces become the same. Yeah. That is really. I think that's really difficult for your brain even to mm. differentiate between the two. Like yeah. what you yeah. need to do, and you know, yeah. So, and even just having people in the library, like your yeah. friends with you, mm -hmm. I, I found that support network really good because for us, you know, when we were going to library, it was like a thing. Like, okay, mm -hmm. everyone meet up in the library seven p.m. We're gonna do it all night. Or someone would go KFC, get a bucket. It's a link yeah. up. Yeah, it's a link <laughs> up. Right. You know, someone else will go Asda, yeah. get the snacks. So we're all there in our tracksuits, knowing that we're gonna be here for the next twelve hours, mm -hmm. and you know, it would just motivate everyone to mm. to work, and yeah. take breaks, socialize, mm. and that kind mm. of thing. Um, but not having that, I mean, for me, I would have struggled. Yeah, no, I, I hear that. Um, as I know, we've talked about like the challenges of being, you know, a student in COVID. But what do you think, you know, as a Christian going into university? What were some of the challenges that you guys faced? <sighs> Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> Where do we start? I feel like uh, as a Christian going into university, mm -hmm. it's it's intense mm -hmm. because. I think everyone, you know, feeds off of freedom in different ways. Mm -hmm. But as a Christian, you know what you're supposed to do and you know what you're not supposed to do. So when you go into that kind of world where you have no one watching you, you're on your own, you're doing exactly what you want to do, when you want to do it, it's hard if you're a Christian trying to be, like, you know, correct. And then there's other people around you kind of just doing other things or they're, you know, for example, freshers. Mm. Mm. Freshers is that time when you explain kind of like what what is freshers? Okay, yeah. <laughs> freshers is when it's like the first week or two of university where you basically just go clubbing, you meet lots of people, mm -hmm. and you live your best life without you know uni actually like the study inside coming mm. into it. It's that week off to just meet new people. So I think for someone who's a Christian, it's hard when you step into uni because you're thinking, okay, do I go clubbing? Am I allowed? Mm -hmm. Like what's the drinking side of things like mm. you know you're questioning a lot of things and yeah. it's like if you as you know we don't really speak about it a lot as well mm. in society yeah. in terms of what a christian should do going into university yeah you kind of have to figure it out on your own yeah mm. and yeah. if you're the only one in your friendship group like who's a christian everyone else is willing to Absolutely. do other things then you're just going to follow along mm -hmm. sometimes or you're, or you're going to be a bit the odd one out um so yeah i'd say in terms of Christian life is kind of, it's the temptation side of things. Yeah. It's kind mm -hmm. of like, you know, being that child of God in a tempting setting, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And if someone was to say that, you know, they're in that situation, I would say you really have to just know who you are. Mm -hmm. There's things you can do, you know, in terms of like socializing, meeting people, going out to eat, mm -hmm. you know, laughing with friends, staying up late, all of that stuff that, you know, uni has to offer without the sinful sides of things to say you know yeah. what i mean mm -hmm. um yeah i was going to talk about clubbing but you know i feel like everyone has different <laughs> opinions on it it's such a it's such a tough one everyone has mm -hmm. different opinions on it mm -hmm. um but from my experience what i will say mm -hmm. is that during first year i went clubbing um i went there you know all sober because <laughs> I, I was like okay yeah i'm not drinking so it's fine mm -hmm. and go see what's happening and stuff like that but i just feel like the atmosphere mm -hmm. Is, is is not holy like is, is not of god and i think you know uni is is a journey mm -hmm. so you learn a lot of things as you go along mm -hmm. and you know the good thing about god as well is that he's there just on our shoulders he's there helping you he's there you know just he's there but um yeah what i'll say is that for me when i was going from first to second year i changed a lot of things because mm -hmm. like i was like no i'm not doing clubbing anymore the atmosphere is not of god why yeah. am i still there but what i will say is that some people do have to go through that in order to make that decision mm -hmm. yeah it's not easy yeah. you don't just come in and like oh yeah i'm not gonna go clubbing why when everyone else is going yeah mm -hmm. so, you know so. yeah <laughs> yeah uh, i think for myself um was a bit of a different situation um i can definitely um see from where she was coming from in terms of what i've witnessed from my friends mm -hmm. who um, were also christians went to university in that struggle as well i definitely agree that it should be spoken about um a lot more because you come from a bubble 
yeah. to outside of that bubble. Mm-hmm. Um, me personally, I was very excited to join a Christian union. I was like, <laughs> I've got to, I was very intentional. I must admit, mm-hmm. I was very intentional. Um, I was like, as soon as I join union, I'm going to find a Christian union. Mm-hmm. I'm going to build a Christian community. Like I, I was very intentional about what I was going to do mm-hmm. um, to be able to continue growing in my faith as I step outside of, you know, secondary school bubble. Um, so I was very intentional. Um, I think also help staying at home helped a lot because I was still part of my church community. Um, I was still part of my, um, being in contact with my Christian friends. I think staying at home really helped a lot. Mm. Um, I think maybe if I moved away from home, things would have been maybe a bit different or would have been a bit harder. But um, I think staying at home helped a lot because I was still going to church um, at home. Um, I was still part of that community. Mm. But in terms of um, building that community when going off to uni, yeah, I was very intentional about it. So, I mean, would I say I face challenges in terms of um, being a Christian and going to uni? I don't know. I would say yes, but I can definitely um, appreciate the challenges that it comes mm-hmm. with because I've 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 observed it. I've I've seen it. Yeah. So personally, um, yeah, I was sort of very intentional about the way I went around things. Yeah. Even what she said there about the challenges is true. Challenges is not only just, you know, temptations and, you know, trying to live the perfect Christian yeah. life or anything like that. Mm. But even just building a relationship with God. Because, same, when I went into uni, I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to be intentional. I'm sure God has something planned for me in this place, you know? Mm-hmm. So let's see what's going on. But you do get to certain points where it's like, oh, I can't, let's say, I can't hear the voice of God. Like, yeah. I don't know where He's leading me. I don't know what He's telling me to do. Or just, you know, challenges within your faith, you mm-hmm. still get that, I think, yeah. during university. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I think um, you, what you said was an interesting point of you were staying at home, mm-hmm. so you had that bit of that consistency. Yeah. Um, whereas, Shewa, you, you lived on campus, out, yeah. so it's like you had to kind of build that yourself as well, um, that community, and find those, those mm-hmm. um, organizations. How was that for you as well, Kwame? My experience was totally different yeah. to you guys because <laughs> at the time when I went to university, um, I was a church goer, mm. but I wasn't a Christian. Mm. I wouldn't say that I was born again. Um, so it's funny because around those times is when I started attending Trinity Baptist Church regularly. Okay. So I'd come down um, every weekend on Saturday to go to work, Sunday to come to church. But when I'm on campus or living my life I'm just doing whatever I feel Mm -hmm. like so I didn't join the Christian union like I was aware of it and I was just like what them and that (laughs) gathering the lines praying and that no that's not for me (laughs) I I remember someone even invited me Mm -hmm. Um, so I did go once and then there was a prophet there Mm -hmm. and um, he called someone out they invited this prophet or whatever and he called someone out and said someone here has been watching pornography um. come out and the person came out mm-hmm. and I said nah I'm out <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here not because, did- not because I was in that class <laughs> yeah. I was doing that but I just knew the life that I was living yeah. mm-hmm. you know you was yeah. Yeah. Out. Yeah, yeah do you know what yeah. I mean so I, I, I wasn't in it so I didn't really associate myself you know, with Christian activities mm-hmm. in university. So I wouldn't say I, I experienced any challenges in relation to my faith mm. because I just thought at the time, as long as I go to church on Sunday, um, I'm good. Yeah. Um, so literally, I was there. I was, I'm, I'm someone who's, um, I keep to myself anyway. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I was very antisocial. Mm-hmm. Right? If you think I'm reserved now, back then, <laughs> I was very antisocial, defensive, so I kind of just kept to myself and I didn't really go out too much, um, although my friends did like to go out. So I was a bit balanced. Sometimes we'd go, you know, Leicester, um, mm-hmm. go to Raven Leicester, mm-hmm. go Raven in Kingston. Um, so I did have that experience. Yeah. I always say to people that I've got a PhD in Raven because <laughs> I've been Raven from when I was like 15. Um, but I, I didn't, you know, I, what I would say is I didn't have the Holy Spirit telling me mm. or convicting me mm. during that period for certain things yeah. and looking back at it I think I needed to go through that 
to get to where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. Just like you were saying that some people have to go through those experiences Mm -hmm. to realise that actually, no, that's not for them. Mm -hmm. Um, But if I could go back, who knows, maybe I would have joined the Christian Union. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I I just wasn't interested. I was just trying to live my best life, Mm -hmm. as they say. Yeah, I would say for me as well, um, I didn't find or seek out that Christian, that's called Christian Union. Mm-hmm. I joined a, a community choir that was uh, basically we'd have our own, we had our own like Christian community mm-hmm. as well. Um, so that definitely helped me in my journey, but I had to definitely seek them out and yeah. find out for myself. I was like, okay, so what am I actually doing to help build my relationship with God? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm not going to church on Sunday, barely open up your Bible. Like, so what, mm-hmm. what, mm-hmm. At, what am I actually doing? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that journey definitely is is a is a needed one yeah. for sure. What I found interesting though was that people would do whatever they want mm-hmm. in uni, but come come exam time, everyone knows where God is. <laughs> everyone <laughs> everyone knows who God is. everyone knows who God is. All the time. So even like even with my friends, yeah, mm-hmm. even though we weren't necessarily Christians, mm-hmm. when it got to exam time, someone would find that Marvin Sapp <laughs> never would have made it. <laughs> On iTunes or Spotify, yeah, that we're playing through the library, and that we playing <laughs> while we're revising, yeah. believing or thinking that it's you know what, fun. yeah, as long as we play that, you know, God's gonna get us through mm. that that exam period. Mm. And, and funny enough, you, you know, God's merciful and He works in mysterious yeah. ways. He, mm-hmm. he did, but um, it's interesting that people know of God. Yeah, yes, yeah. they know what they're supposed to be doing, mm-hmm. but it's almost like you know we, we, why we do choose you think another that, road. Why do you think that is? Like you know. I think when we're young, you, you know what you're supposed to be doing. You know, you know, you're supposed to have a relationship with God and what that takes and that commitment. But at the same time, it's like, why do you think we choose mm. to go another path or say, mm, maybe I'll just put that on the back burner for now? I feel like it's a lot of things. It's you think it's some things. peer pressure as well? Oh, in what way? Like peer pressure from friends to like go out or uh, live your, quote unquote, live your best life. Do you like, know what? I feel like sometimes, yeah, definitely it's peer pressure, but also it's the social norm. Mm. What's normal in uni is to go to uni, enjoy yourself, do everything you want to do, and, you know, get your education and go. But for a Christian, it's harder because you know what you're supposed to be doing, but, again, you can feel like the odd one out. Mm. So, for example, if you're, you're in a friendship group, you know, everyone's talking about this, that, and that, you know, let's just say it, drugs, alcohol, sex, all of that. You're sitting there, you know that's not what you're about, but it's like, what do you do in those situations? Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people just, sometimes they feel silenced, you Mm -hmm. know? I feel like if you're a Christian like me sometimes, like, you know, because I knew God going into university, when you're in that space, it's like, do I say anything or do I just leave it? Because Mm -hmm. if you say something, then it's like, what's she she talking about type (laughs) thing, you know? Bringing the mood down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, it's, it's, I don't know. I was having a conversation with my friend actually and I do think that some people go into university actually desiring a relationship with God mm. but when you get there mm. you have to put in effort people think like mm. you, you know a relationship with God you have to put in yeah. effort mm. and then yeah. they realise actually it's kind of hard like okay so for example if you join a union you're meeting like three times a week so you know you join it's like oh they require me to come in three times a week they require me to not do this not do that I feel like a lot of people then see the, the rules or they see the expectations and then it kind of pushes them further back to the point where it's just like, oh, let me just be like every other normal young person in the mm. Yeah. So it is, it is it's a lot, I would say, but it's that decision. I think some people don't come into uni saying, you know what, I want a relationship with God and I'm actually here to put the effort in. But like I said before, it is a journey. And mm-hmm. I think if you have the right people around you, they can push you. Yeah. Just like you can have the wrong people around you who push you to go and do, you know, bad stuff right yeah. you can have the right people around you who's like okay let's go to church today let's go to this society yeah. mm-hmm. you know so yeah i definitely feel like you have to be intentional mm. um about in your relationship with god and walking with god um but i feel like when you don't know who you are mm. and you don't know your identity you then kind of follow what other people are doing mm-hmm. and you succumb to peer pressures Hence why sometimes we make the wrong decisions and don't do what we're supposed to do Mm. um, because we don't know who we are. We don't know the word of God properly. Mm. Um, The Bible says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So when you don't know something, you're not able to make informed decisions. 
and I feel like sometimes that's what happens with us as young people. Mm. Not only that, there's the, the lust of the eye as well. We see things that, you know, we think are enticing, looks good, but actually, you know, the outcome of those decisions or the outcome of those actions um, isn't good. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes we, we forget about that. Mm. We, don't, we don't see that, you know, when, when the devil said to Eve, you know, eat this apple and you'll be like, so, well, not apple, but eat this fruit and you'll mm-hmm. be like, God, she didn't see that actually, if I do that, at the time she didn't realise that if I do yeah. that, it's a sin mm-hmm. and it will separate me from God. Yeah. But, you know, she was captured by the lust of the eye and thought, oh, okay, you know, be like God, why not? People let me just let me just do it. Short-term gratification. Yeah, yeah short-term yeah. gratification as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think all of that um, sometimes makes us make the wrong decisions mm-hmm. and not do what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that just highlights the, I think, the importance of community but as well mm-hmm. as you said, um, that identity struggle that a lot of young adults go through between like the ages of like 16 to like, I would say even 24 or 25. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah um, I think that that struggle of, you know, finding out who you are and, um, you know, the things that you value, yeah. that that can be a really trying time. And especially in university when you're away from the norm and away from your comfort zone, really that's when it really, you really test and you have yeah. that crisis of like, who am I? And then yeah. you think, okay, who am I? But who, who does God say I am? And I think really finding out, you know, who you are and finding your identity in God, that is like the key of kind of not succumbing to these peer pressures and mm-hmm. um, yeah. feeling to be led a certain way. Yeah. What I say is well, who you think you are as well going into university mm. is not who you are mm. at all. Because you can think that, you know, I have a great relationship with God. I'm good. Da, 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 da. No, these circumstances are going to test you. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, being with different people, and let's say, for example, as a Christian, we went to show love. You know, we all know that. But when we're pushed into a circumstance, for example, yeah. in the kitchen, people aren't washing their plates, <laughs> yeah. you know, people aren't doing certain things. And then let's say you're something fiery. Your on the floor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you're switching, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That is showing that you know you don't have love in your heart, or you don't have the love that you should have in your heart. There's so many testing aspects when you're in university. Like, is 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 so I don't know. It's so complex. Mm. For example, yeah, yeah. you said something I, I was gonna pinpoint. Yeah, <laughs> I was just gonna say on the back of what you were saying. I yeah. think there's also a flip side to it as well because there are people that know who they are before they go to uni mm. but when they get there they want to be a different person mm. again because of that identity crisis mm-hmm. they want to go there and be the person that everyone perceives them to be cool yeah so you know there were people that back home in london you know you you used to go to you um, college you went to church like we all know who you who you are mm-hmm. but then all of a sudden when you get to uni and you're around girls and oh, guys, yeah. you're behaving as if like you're Switch bad. Up. Up. <laughs> you know, like all of a sudden you're you're, you're doing certain things yeah. that are are not you. Mm-hmm. Like you're you're mm-hmm. beefing with people in the library. That's one thing I never understood <laughs> in in uni. Like, yeah. how how can you come and fight someone in the library? <laughs> that, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You should, you should even know that's not your portion. Yeah. You're in the library. Yeah. You're in the library for a reason. You've come to uni for yeah. a reason. But because of the identity crisis, again, mm-hmm. like, people just, you know, mm. feel that they have to portray a certain image. Mm. Yeah. Um, and that's why we can't forsake the gathering of believers and not just gathering, just that fellowship. Yeah. Because mm. in fellowship, there's accountability. Mm-hmm. So you know, if I, if I don't come to church for some time, there's someone mm. within the impact ministry or there's someone within the pastoral team that will look out for me. Yeah. But if you're not part of that, you can easily get lost in that big environment. Mm. Um, that's why I was saying that maybe I would have joined a, a Christian group back then just because there's that level of accountability mm-hmm. that way if they see me behave in a certain way mm-hmm. someone can correct me <laughs> yeah. as a brother in love call you out in love yeah mm-hmm. yeah. yeah no so I, I know you've touched on it a little bit what advice would you say would you all give to you know young adults who are watching this or you know mm-hmm. teenagers who are watching about to go into university what sort of things would you tell them in advance kind of a preparation thing yeah. I think it, yeah, it definitely, st- I think what you said, preparation, mm. actually prepare. Um, it starts before you even um, start your university journey. Have a think about the um, 
the church that you're in or the community that you may be in or, um, already, you know, think about the um, theology that's coming from the pulpit. Think about the word you're receiving. Um, seek out to understand God more, understand his word more, because entering into university with bad theology is not good as well mm -hmm. because what you thought you knew becomes not what you know mm -hmm. um one thing that i used to discuss with one of my friends a lot she struggled a lot with um um she was she um did does um she studies law very competitive field and she struggled a lot with being a believer herself and struggling a lot with um, non-believers you know it's maybe superseding her by with, with grades or mm. getting um internships and she struggled a lot with that that um concept of I, i'm a christian you know what what's god doing for me but god's mm. doing um or but the sort of non-believers are you know getting internships getting like mm. great grades and i'm here like completely just slacking it out in the books and you know I'm getting by and but you know what's going on but if you don't go into and that could be similar to other university students who struggle with that but for example if you go into that sort of situation thinking that oh yeah you know God's gonna do everything for me he's gonna get me through well no that's not correct when really, I mean, I'm starting to touch on something that's a whole topic on its own, but <laughs> if you don't understand um, that actually the word teaches common grace, which means that God has a certain type of grace that's extended to everyone, mm -hmm. believers mm -hmm. and non-believers, mm -hmm. um, you understand and actually get to appreciate God truly for who he is, his sovereignty. And that's why there's such a, um, we have such a, it's a, amazing, we have such a diversity um, that God has created you understand truly that you know God's not there to be your genie he's not mm. the thing that you know put a coin in and then, yeah he gives me what I want um, which so I think that's something that a lot of university students will struggle with mm -hmm. um, that's just an example that you know going in be prepared in terms of what you believe it's a journey and we're all learning truly what the word is but prepare um, seek out people that you can you know continue to converse with um on your journey through university be very intentional be very intentional about finding a church building um, a community never be afraid to be vulnerable and ask other people how was it for you um tell me your experience um yeah i think definitely being intentional and some of the other stuff i mentioned mm -hmm. yeah Oh, that's great. That's great tips. Shayla, what would you, what advice would you give? <laughs> I'd say that, listen, God has purpose for your life. He does. You are a child of God. And when you go into uni, you can move a little to the left sometimes. But if you remember that God is constant and that he genuinely loves you, then you can always come back to him. You can always, he will always, you know, guide you if you allow him. Like she said, everything you do, it's intentional. You know, in your Christian walk is going to be intentional. You're going to have to say, I need to find a church society or I need to confide in my friends about this or, you know, mm -hmm. I need to call someone up. You're going to have to do this because you cannot do uni alone. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot yeah. do the education side of uni alone. You cannot do the Christian side of uni alone. So understand that, you know, God cares. If you sit there and pray, you know, God, I need a Christian friend in my life. Mm -hmm. He will bring one because he will see your heart and he'll see your intentions behind it. So it's just understanding that God has purpose for your life. Mm -hmm. So, because you're gonna go into uni, you're gonna feel alone sometimes. You're gonna feel a bit depressed. You're gonna feel anxious about certain things. God is there. He's there in every situation. Like you are bigger than your situation at that moment. Because you know, some people they, they will think that okay, because I'm going through this, this defines me. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. define you. You know, God is bigger than that, and you're mm -hmm. bigger than that. Mm -hmm. So it's just remembering that you know, God's got you. He loves you, and you're gonna get out of this. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks, Shewa. Kwame? Uh, well, I think the key is preparation, mm -hmm. as you said. Um, and I think prior to going to uni, there's some things that you actually need to do mm -hmm. before you go, which you, you guys have touched on already. Um, but for me, what I'd say is definitely do a discipleship course before mm -hmm. you go to university. And um, you can do that here. Um, 
before you go. That Can you way, tell us a bit more about the discipleship course? So yes, so the discipleship course will teach you more about Christ okay. and will help you to discover who you are in Christ mm. and therefore making you or equipping you to become a disciple. Um, so for me, I feel like that's important to discover your identity and having that foundation will prepare you for when you do go into the big world of university when no one's around you and regardless of what's going on around you what people are doing you know who you are in Christ I, I think that's key um, but also prior to going to university as well I think have it in mind that you need to be attached to some sort of Christian fellowship mm. while you're there and when you come back for holidays so when you come back you need to be coming to church and then when you're there you need to be involved in some sort of Christian fellowship so that yeah. there's that accountability while you're there and also have someone in your main church as well who you're accountable to mm. as well um, so for example when I was in university even though I used to mess around Pastor Steve used to be on me he'd phone <laughs> me and call me Kwame how are you doing mm -hmm. not just from you know a spiritual perspective but also like just to make sure emotionally and mentally I'm, yeah. I'm doing okay and for mm -hmm. me having him brought me back home mm. always it, it made sure that I came back to church because when I was around he would give me a call and make sure that you know I'm coming to church on Sunday during the holidays and so on so I definitely feel like you need to be linked in within the community fellowship but one thing I'm going to say and I'll go a bit further than um, what you guys were saying about community fellowship mm. is before you get to university ask someone about the community fellowship mm. because yeah. what you find is that there's different theology around so you might join a church you know local to your university which doesn't necessarily have the same <laughs> theology and doctrines yeah. that your home church has mm. and for me that's very important um so for me even for my kids um, in the future i would want them to find out from someone else you know what does that christian fellowship believe yeah. in what is their doctrine that they're following and if there's a choice between a top university and uh, a university who has um, a Christian doctrine that's sound, um, but let's say the university isn't as high up in the mm -hmm. ranks, you're going to go to the university that has a Christian fellowship with a sound doctrine because that is what's going to pro propel mm -hmm, you yeah. in life. Mm -hmm. You can go to a top university and if the Christian doctrine in that community isn't sound mm -hmm. and they're teaching you all sorts of things, guess mm -hmm. what? You can get a first class in whatever you studied, mm -hmm. but your foundation in your faith isn't yeah. sound. Mm -hmm. So for me, those things, like I think you have to go a step further in the preparation and just make sure that the environment that you're going to is actually a flourishing environment, mm -hmm. uh, an environment that's going to allow you to, go, to grow as a Christian. Um, because university is only three, four, five maybe if you're not serious six years <laughs> do you know it's, it's it's temporary yeah you know you're gonna come out of university and then you're gonna be thrown into the big wide world you know where you're having to go to work and you're adulting you see what i'm saying yeah. and, your, and your faith and all that kind of stuff is going to be challenged there yeah um so you can't get lost in university that that mm -hmm. preparation needs to occur before then so that it gives you a good a good foundation mm, no i think you guys have touched on some amazing points about being prepared as a christian going into university finding the right community i, I mean you even mentioned a discipleship course um going on before just to prepare you spiritually mentally to embark on a new journey because that's what university is an entirely new journey mm. so i want to thank you guys so much for all the gems that you've dropped um, it's been lovely having you guys here in the studio. I hope we can do this again soon. No worries. Always a pleasure. Yep. Thank a you. Pleasure. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't for forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, please share this with all your friends, family, and loved ones. Stay tuned for the next episode of Let's Chat Sunday. Bye. Mm -hmm.